the quality of talent in India is is not as rich as if it had been if all the universities and educational institutions had taken this approach many decades ago. It's a bit narrow and uh, if, I, if you were to relate to the industry in which I am, if you see they're all pretty much similar jobs. The distinctions in jobs is pretty thin and uh, uh, they're getting more and more automated, they're getting more and more similar. And at the end of 10 years, if they were to do, the differentiation is vanishing. Whereas it is, when it gets to be multiple disciplinary, then that's when true value will start getting added. And if I may just add to, to, to that sort of this, uh, chain of thought, um, I don't think it's fair to talk about deficits. I think um, every educational institution in India is performing a very important role. If this demographic dividend is not to become a demographic disaster, we need many, many more uh, institutions of higher education doing what they're doing. We just want to do things a little differently because we believe that there is a need. There is also a need. In addition to what is being satisfied by the current um, institutions and systems, there is also a need to provide uh, a broader-based, more well-rounded, more contextualized education so that students who enter the, the working world not only are very, very good at the skills and capabilities that they need for their job, but also have a context in which to understand it. I think if you go and speak to the heads of HR of the technology companies or other corporates, they'll tell you that there's no shortage of engineers in India. What they, sh what they don't have are managers. Now, people who have the ability to manage technology. enterprise, to look across the, the, to escape from the, uh, the utility and features and functionality of the product to the utility, features, and functionality needed in society. And I think that's what we want to try and aim to fulfill that need, which is still, we believe, not fully met by uh, the rest of the, the environment, which fills a certain need, but we're fulfilling a different kind of need. We also want to prepare students in an interdisciplinary fashion at the very beginning of their academic careers which is to start with the inter undergraduate curriculum and to require students to take courses in multiple disciplines as a process of their education. So an undergraduate coming into the Shivnada University will be required to take a core curriculum that crosses all of the different academic and disciplinary boundaries within the university. And it's going to be quite a change, Dr. Sinha, because from the school when they come out, in the school they're forced to change, uh, to choose that either you take computer science or you take economics or you take home science, but you can't take a little bit of everything. So that's, that's a huge change in the way they approach. Yes, and, and, and we believe that, that um, not only should we be given this core curriculum, they should also be given the choice of taking electives in a wide range of, of uh, uh, subjects that they want to explore. And only then should we force them into a specialization. That opportunity to, for a university to provide room for intellectual exploration and to find their true passion is something that is not easily available within the system today. And we believe we need to do that so that we get the right match between what a student's real passions are and uh, what they are good at uh, before we start saying to them, well, you have to specialize within, you know, for three years in a single subject. So this is it's a sorry. discovery process. Sure. I, I'm quite clear about this because my daughter went through this. See, every year there are 80,000 students who leave the shores of India to go overseas through, get this very form of education that we are bringing in. So it's nothing new for Indians but they are finding it overseas. They are not finding it in India. So there are hundreds of thousands of them who are all over the place who have experienced this. So they are there. This method is there. It's just that it's not here available in India at the price at which it should be offered here. It, it won't cost less than $150,000 for you know, for a student to go through similar education anywhere overseas. That's what actually is we're enabling here. So will the cost of education in your university be 
significantly lower or do you think that you're offering the same quality at similar prices but within India? Mm, we're not price, you know, we're not going to be price related. That's a new subject. If you want, he will talk about it. Sure. We are going to be pretty much uh, blind to what someone has the ability to pay. That means if a student is selected, money will not be the reason why he won't be able to pursue SNU, Shivnara University. So that means there won't be a limit in on scholarships SSN, or support? Yeah, there won't yeah. be a limit. SSN actually follows this even today. Right. You know, yeah, in Chennai. Yeah. So that's something that, you know, this is a philanthropic uh, initiative. It's not an initiative for, you know, with money in mind. We'll, but we'll, you know, we'll, we'll sure. institute there's nothing wrong about it, yeah. sure. but not not in this university. We'll institute a need uh, blind merit based admission system, uh, whereby Money all, stu all students will be recruited on the basis of a merit based admissions uh, uh, merit based admissions criteria, and all students who are admitted to the university will have the opportunity to start and complete their program of study regardless of their financial background. I want to take a couple of broad uh, issues concerning this. You mentioned philanthropy. My question to you, sir, is that is this just philanthropy or do you see this also as an opportunity for industry leaders like you to shape the future course of education, which is also a little bit in self-interest because you want to ensure that groups like yours continue to get high quality talent which is so essential if you want to grow at a certain pace and if you want to grow at a certain quality. We have experience in this in the sense that SSN when we have instituted SSN is in the you know feeding the software industry itself but HCL is a very small component of where they go to. You know it's not that 700, 800 students come out and they go to HCL. Less than 100 go to HCL out of their choice. You know, they all have multiple jobs in hand. So to us, we feel that there is need to build leadership into the society, particularly where we come from. So we thought that, you know, we would go, our entire student selection process itself, you know, I don't know whether you heard him say, we are going to recruit students. You don't say, we will admit students, okay? We are going to choose them. And uh, uh, we are going to choose the students who will be most suitable to a curriculum of this nature, method of teaching, the body of teaching, the entire persona that we are trying to create. And it, it's a multi-layered admissions criteria that uh, pays, uh, has value uh, placed on academic achievement. But in addition to that, has many other components to it. So that again, we're looking for the well-rounded, exceptional student for a well-rounded, exceptional education. I hope they don't go to the corporate world, but go and join the public world. <laughs>